Hello. OK, so if you guys are here, then chances are you guys have already watched my Vidig Reaction Made Easy introductory video. If you haven't, make sure you watch that first. Otherwise, this video won't make too much, won't make too much sense to you. All right? So um, chances, chances are, if you're here, you guys already watched that video, and you are probably confused why I got a Z alkene and an E alkene and two different products um, in, that, in that video, right? Well, the reason is because depending on your yield, that, or ILID that you use in the, in the Wittig reaction, you're either going to get a Z alkene or an E alkene. And the important factor is whether or not the ILID has some sort of stabilizing resonance in it. Okay? So in that video, I had used this ILID over here, where the carbon of the ILID has just two carbon chains here that provide no resonance to help stabilize it. But um, the other example had a benzene ring, right? So there's actually a, a resonance that can occur with the benzene ring. And I'll show you guys that right now. The electrons on the carbon ion, or carbon with a negative charge, can simply resonate over here to form a double bond. And then the, uh, the double bond of the benzene ring can resonate over here. Technically, there's a lot more um, possible resonances. But I'm not going to take the time to show you that because it's, it's overly complicated and you guys don't need to worry about it. You just need to worry about um, being able to recognize resonances. OK, so as you can see, right, this is a possible resonance structure from this shift in electrons. The two electrons went over here to form a double bond. The, and that overloaded this carbon over here with way too many bonds, because carbon only likes four bonds. He has that right now. He's getting a fifth bond. So he's going to give up this double bond over here. It's going to resonate onto that carbon right there. That's why the two electrons in the bond are now here, giving that carbon a negative charge. And this can keep spinning around in the ring multiple times. So that provides stable sta stability and stabilization to our ILID over here. And that's why when you react this ILID with um, ketones or aldehydes, you'll form a E alkene versus a Z alkene. All right? OK. So furthermore, your resonance also has to occur right next to the carbon ion or the carbon with the negative charge. For like, just like in this example over here, this example here, our electrons can resonate to the ester group over here. And more specifically, this carbonyl here is perfect. So careful here, I will be referring to two different double bonds. In the first situation, a carbon-carbon double bond is forming, and the second situation, a carbon-oxygen double bond is breaking. It, the two electrons can resonate over here, forming a double bond. The two electrons in the double bond can resonate up here. And essentially, you'll get this resonance structure form over here. I didn't draw the rest of the ILID just to save space, and I'm also cramped there. But um, yeah, as you can see, right, there's, an, uh, there's another resonance structure that, that can occur, putting the negative charge on the oxygen. All right. So whenever you use ILIDs of these types with resonance occurring, make sure you draw your product with a E alkene, just like how this looks like over here. E alkene, the big groups, or the higher priority groups, are on opposite sides or opposite sides. Right? And then um, for the no resonance ones, um, oh yeah, I, I really wanted to stress, you, you see how this one here, technically there's a resonance that, can, resonance that can occur here? Well, the issue is that you can't just have resonance in your molecule. It has to be next to the carbon ion. It has to be close so that um, resonance can occur between your carbon and whatever resonating group you have. And the problem with this illet is that you have electrons here that can resonate, but they can't resonate or they, they can't reach it, you know? So that's why even though this structure has a reactive ester group here and a carbonyl that can resonate, it's still going to give you a Z alkene where the higher priority groups are on the same side and closer to each other. And this is less stable if you guys watch my other video. Um, yeah, so in general, when you react your ketone or aldehyde, for example, this one here, my ketone, right, with a phosphonium ilid, if it's no, if it has no resonance in it that can stabilize it in the carbon chain, then you'll get a Z alkene. Uh, Z alkene my bad. And if, you, if it does have re some sort of resonance, then you'll get a E alkene. All right? OK, so the trick is that with resonance, typically your molecules are more stable, right? So a ilid with resonance that makes it more stable gives you an alkene that's also more stable. Because remember, E eposite. E alkenes are more stable than Z alkenes. All right, so no resonance, typically less stable, so you get a less stable alkene. Okay. Um, I also haven't 
uh, figure out exactly why, if you have a resonating group on your ILID, you get a E alkene. But when I find out, I'll be sure to tell you guys, OK? Hopefully, that was a little bit helpful. Um, yeah, as always, if you like this video, make sure you like it down there and share it with your orgo friends. Um, if you like to get updated when I make new videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you'd like to connect with me on Facebook or Twitter or donate a couple bucks, just click on one of the buttons right there. All right, bye.